I'm going to show you how to trim the base of a pot. Okay, so I've made this pot and I've got the lid already trimmed, but now I figured I should show you how I trim pottery. So we take the pot, um, after it's been drying, we call this leather hard. When you can pick it up without putting a fingerprint in it or denting it, then it's a good time to trim a foot and smooth the bottom. This is some soft clay that I'm going to use. This is called um, clay keys. We lock the pot into position to keep it from slipping and sliding around. I'm not like, it, this isn't in the exact right position yet. I need to measure and make sure that it is um, centered. So I'm going to turn my wheel on very slowly and just make a mark. I'm holding my tool still and where it makes a mark with the needle tool by holding it still, that tells me that it's too close to the tool. So I'm going to move it away a little bit, slide my keys around, smooth out the mark and turn it on again. And you keep doing this until the tool makes a mark all the way around. It's almost completely doing that already. So I'm just nudging it a tiny bit more and I'm going to fasten my keys. Something tells me that it's already on center. So I'm going to try and check. And if I'm holding the tool really still and I make a mark all the way around, which I am, then that's centered. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and really fasten the keys so it doesn't slip around while I'm trimming it. So this is a loop tool. It's a metal sharp piece that's in a kind of a hook shape and it catches the clay and cuts it away while the wheel is spinning it. So I'm going to turn it on kind of a medium speed and it looks like it's a really easy thing to do and it is an easy thing to do but I am going to brace my arms and hold the tool securely and have a finger on the bottom of the pot, which is upside down, so it looks like it's the top of the pot, and I'm cutting away the excess clay to make it look rounded and finished and not a sharp edge at the bottom. Sometimes if you go at this too roughly, you can dive into the pot and cut through the pot too, too easily, so the best method is to take your time and go very gently. Relax yourself, drop your shoulders, and kind of enjoy the spirals coming off. This is actually kind of a fun thing to do. Watching the spirals come off nice and easily um, is kind of hypnotizing. Another one of those satisfying parts of making pottery actually. So the idea is to define the shape um, nicely uh, so the bottom should complement the top. Now if you remember the opening of the pot went in a little bit from the curve so I am defining the foot to do the same. And what I did here is I took some off the very center so that the center is sunken in and I'm going to leave the foot, the actual base of this ring all um, raised from that. And on bigger pieces of pottery that is to keep it from rocking once it's dry. So if in the kiln sometimes our pottery will warp just because of the intense heat but by taking out the center and leaving a ring around the outside, uh, you have a better chance of the pot sitting steady and not wobbling on the kitchen table. There we go. 
Yeah, it's really kind of frustrating. Sometimes when I make a beautifully centered piece of pottery and then it comes out of the kiln and it's all like kittywampus a little bit because that intense heat will sometimes change the shape of our pottery. That's all a part of it. I'm just smoothing this with the wooden tool. This is a beautiful wooden tool. I love the narrow peak and I love the rounded edge down here. So I always use that rounded edge to burnish it's called. We burnish the surface of the clay to make it all completely smooth. I'm just checking it with my finger now to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then too, like I said, um, I made the lid like a little bowl, but I had already trimmed that. And so now this little pot is complete. You can see the little definition of the foot underneath and it complements the pot altogether. Thank you for watching.